50 years ago, early 1971, Grace began as a church. And this year, for the next number of months, we're going to be celebrating our 50th anniversary. Today's sermon is about the beginning of the celebration. Stay tuned. Good morning, Grace and friends. Today we begin our celebration of Grace at 50. Or is it 51? The pandemic has messed up our calendars. Over the next six months, we will be celebrating it in a number of ways. Today, I want us to look at two vital dimensions of being the church, this church and every church, traditioning and visioning. I like the verb form of tradition, traditioning, because tradition is a living thing. Paul uses the verb form in 1 Corinthians 15 when he said, I handed on to you what I have received. He is talking about the Easter tradition. Tradition is a living thing because it is always being passed down, and as it is being passed down, it is being interpreted and adapted to the needs and mission of the church for today. Sometimes we get a disease called categorical sclerosis, a hardening of the categories. Jesus had, shall we say, a lively relationship with tradition. He honored it and he criticized it. In his words just before the Sermon on the Mount, he said of scripture and tradition, do not think I have come to abolish the law and the prophets, I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. He was not a hater of tradition, but a reformer and renewer of tradition. So a few verses down in the Sermon on the Mount, he six times said, you have heard that it was said, but I say to you, he was traditioning, honoring the law and the prophets, but deepening their meaning. The commandment against murder was deepened to harboring anger in your heart toward another. Loving your neighbor and hating your enemies turned into loving everybody, even your enemies. Later on in Matthew, he takes on tradition and what it can do if wrongly used. The tradition keepers came to him and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before their meal. Jesus volleyed back his own question. And why do you break the commandments of God for the sake of tradition? No gentle Jesus, meek and mild there. A living tradition has both the words and the music. Sometimes we lose the tune. The tune is love. Jesus was the great improviser of tradition. He knew when to stick to the words and when to deepen their meaning, and he always knew the tune. The Jewish people, when talking about Scripture, used two phrases, the written Torah and the oral Torah. The written Torah is the written words of Scripture. The oral Torah is the expansion of the Torah through interpretation that keeps the Bible alive. So for us at Grace, there is a written tradition which we recover from facts and documents and memories. And there is an oral tradition where we have kept adapting it over the years. In the next months, I hope we take an opportunity to celebrate our tradition and traditions, to remember the moments that have captured our hearts, the moments moments when it was God at work, not just us at work, those early months of planning and dreaming, our first worship service, the early years in our cement block church, 
our first service here in this church with Wayne Rogers making the cross, which we see every Sunday. Those Easter sunrise services with breakfast, first on our grounds here and then at 5th Street, 50 years of communion services. I also hope we will mark the ways we have altered our traditions in order to better love God and neighbor. Our very forming was an altering of tradition as we sought to be a different kind of Baptist church. Today, we're not just um, a different kind of Baptist church, we're a different kind of church with members from many other denominations and faith traditions. Off the top of my head, I can count seven. Methodist, Episcopal, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Catholic, Jewish, and Pentecostal. So call us Grace, Methodist, Episcopal, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Catholic, Jewish, Pentecostal, whosoever will, Baptist Church. Which brings me to that other vital dimension of being the church, visioning. When the Holy Spirit fell upon the new church at Pentecost, Peter said it was a fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. It will be in the last days, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Girls and women, too. Remarkably so. Do you remember some of the original dreams and visions? And what about the dreams and visions that have come since? In the 20th century, a new kind of theology arose called the Theology of Hope. It said that God was not just up there in the heavens and not just down there in the depths. God is coming to us from the future, coming with the new. This God comes with dreams and visions. Who are members here today who would not have been members 50 years ago? who is preaching from our pulpit some Sundays today who would not have been 50 years ago? What are the ways we serve this community that have expanded through these 50 years? There is a passage I love from Isaiah 43. The Hebrew people are languishing in Babylonian captivity. They are worrying and despairing and doing a little whining. You acted for us in the past. Remember when you delivered us from slavery? Why aren't you acting like that now? And God said to them, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, I am doing a new thing. Can you not perceive it? Remember not. There is a kind of remembering that is a form of faithfulness and a kind of remembering that is a kind of unfaithfulness. We can be gripped in nostalgia, wanting to go back to the church of former years. People all over America are nervous about the future of the church with good reason. Some dream of going back to the church of the 60s or 70s or 80s or 50s even when America was flooded with people coming back to church. Those years were the golden age of the church. But those days are gone, never to return. God is doing a new thing. Let us look out for it. Nostalgia can be a deadly thing. It, can, it even can cause us to despise or devalue who we are now. It can close our eyes to the new. 
Peter Drucker, the noted Harvard Business School professor said, sometimes to repeat the successes of the past is worse than a failure. We need Jesus and the Spirit to help us improvise on our tradition that we may be more fully what God wants us to be and needs for us to be. It will be a blending of the old and the new. One day Jesus was talking to his disciples about how to be scribes for the kingdom of God. Wise teachers of the kingdom brought near in him. He said, it's like the head of a household who goes to the house treasury and brings out what is new and what is old. What is new and what is old. So this year, let's go to the church's cupboard and take out what is old and what is new that we may love the old and give thanks for what is new. At the end of our celebration, may we say with Doug Hammarskjöld, the great Secretary General of the UN, a leader and a mystic, who said, for all that has been, thanks. For all that shall be, yes. Amen.